Hey, thank you so much for watching. I really appreciate your involvement, your engagement, loving, liking, sharing, commenting, sending me messages. It means so much to me to know that this adds some value to your day. One of the things that I want to talk to you about as we are sort of unfolding these 30 days together is the idea of making strategic moves during a high pressure time. Now, this isn't just something that is applicable to these unique times. High pressure times happen to us often. We go through seasons in our life when the pressure just seems to be mounting. There are often competing uh, interests, competing things for our attention, for our strength, for our, um, for our bandwidth, right? Our, our margin is narrowing as we are being more and more involved by different things that are demanding our every ounce of presence and attention and how do you make good strategic decisions during that time that is a question that i ask myself often it's very easy to get to the point where you feel like your knees are getting weak and you're buckling a bit because it just seems to be so much so one of the things that i think of when i think of a strategic move is i think of a plan or a method that i want to um, apply um, create. Crafting a strategic plan is to look at where you're going and what you have to get there. Your resources, your strengths, the things that you have acquired over time. It is really important to know that when you are making this these strategic decisions, when you are aiming for a certain outcome during pressure, during high stress times, that often you are cross or course connect correcting. You are constantly adjusting. I imagine the a boat in a stormy sea. I, I don't love boats. The sea on the best of days gives me a little bit of pause. Um, so a boat on stormy seas would make me feel very, very uneasy. I'm not a sailor. I don't know anything about that topic, but I do know that when you're sailing stormy seas, that is not the time to let go of the steering wheel. I know that that's not what it's called, but you're holding on. And as you're holding on, you're adjusting. Driving, that's the same way. Any situation where all of your attention is demanded, competing things are vying for your resources, for your time, for your attention, that is when you hold on and not with a death grip but with a certainty that you're in this and you're going to stay in it and you're going to make micro adjustments and even bigger adjustments if needed. You are in it. So making strategic decisions during a time of intensity means that you are staying committed to the, to the cause. Now that doesn't mean that you don't rest. That doesn't mean that you don't take a deep breath. You acknowledge your overwhelm. Um, this is where it's really important to recognize that most of the time, most of our lives, while they may feel like we're out in the open sea in storm under stormy conditions, that is not the reality of even the most challenging circumstances in life. We get a breath, we get a moment, we get to make a phone call, we get to hit pause, we get to disconnect from our phones and our, uh, our media, even for just 15 minutes. We get to acknowledge our fatigue, but we don't quit. The other thing that is really important to remember is that you're making these micro adjustments continually. So you're nimble. You have the ability to stay flexible in the moment, to respond to what is coming your way. Very important to recognize that that reword of respond means that you are tapping into your strengths and your knowledge. I'm reminded of times when I feel a bit out of sorts, which happens often when I feel like maybe the resources that I have available are going down and the opportunities are not disproportionately higher um, to, to be able to fill those resources back up. Maybe my time is incredibly taxed with, uh, with other things um, and, and things that, that are new to my docket. I'm thinking of those of you who are now um, teaching your children at home like, like we are 
and, and what it looks like to, to navigate those waters. I'm thinking of those of us who are parenting older children who are still at home um, and what that looks like for them, the opportunities that they feel like they've lost because of shelter in place, um, the opportunities that we feel they've lost and the frustrations that come with all of that. So this constant micro adjusting and that you just feel like, oh, I just, I just need a moment take that moment, adjust, um, be nimble, be flexible, um, be, be, give yourself permission to respond um, versus react. And then the last thing is so important, and this is something that is very challenging for me. I am a, I'm an impact person. I'm a driver and achiever. I want to see things change. I want to think, see things move. Um, I, I want to know that I'm going to get out of this storm. Um, I'm, I'm very motivated by the outcome of something. So I get hung up. I get hung up on micro goals. I get hung up on measuring the incremental forward progress uh, because I want to already be there. I want to have that big outcome already. So my encouragement to you is to take a look and measure the small steps. Measure the incremental, those micro uh, steps forward and uh, allow yourself to celebrate those because in times of stress making really good strategic uh, plans and um, applying strategic methods to a situation that is is competing for your attention and for your resources um, in order for you to do that it is really important to remind yourself of the of the little victories of the little steps forward I'm, I'm uh, remembering my grandmother. When I grew up, was growing up, we did not have um, vehicles. We didn't have car, a car. My, my, my mother still doesn't drive. Um, so we, we walked everywhere. Um, and so I'm remembering taking our, my grandmother's cart loaded with goodies from her garden to the market. And I'm remembering um, having to, it was so full of, of, and so heavy, she would, she would pull it um, and I would help her. She would pull and I would push. Well, when we were on this particular part of, a, of, the, of the journey, um, the road, believe it or not, I'm 41 years old, but I still grew up with like cobblestones and, and carts and horse and buggy and stuff like that, right? Um, just where I grew up. So. So the road, that particular part of the road was cobblestones and cobblestones are like slick, man. They are like a mirror. Um, you really need to, you, you really need to have a good grip. Um, and the, 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 the road would, would, would point down, right, but downhill on cobblestone with a really super heavy cart filled with farmer's market goods to take to the market. And she would, she would push it back against it as she was guiding this this cart and just you know things were happening people were walking by and people greet her and and maybe maybe a, a stone would be missing and my job was to pull back and that was the way of getting safely to the market the reason i'm telling you this story is because sometimes in our strategic planning we think it's always about push Sometimes it's about pulling back. It's about stemming it back and pushing things back to give yourself some space so you can start measuring the small incremental steps forward. That story just came to mind when I was thinking of you and I was thinking of us navigating all of this and really doing the best we can with what we've got and still wanting to be hopeful about our future and still wanting to be hopeful about what is coming our way even as we are seeing the problems magnified and and getting larger and larger and we feel like we're getting smaller and smaller the waves are getting bigger and we're getting tinier i want you to get ahead of that i want you to understand that part of making um, strategic moves is about planning it's about 
developing a good method and that is part and parcel to understanding your fatigue, recognizing it, acknowledging it, um, being able to say, I'm, I'm going to be nimble during these times. I'm going to make micro adjustments. I'm going to constantly stay at the, at the wheel and then also measuring those incremental forward uh, steps of progress um, and not just getting caught up on the end goal, but really looking at each step forward. Look, I think what happens is it's really, it's really, it starts getting to your, into your head. You start feeling like, oh, this is just going to, you know, it's just too much. This is something that I feel very strongly about because it's something I learned in my own life. Um, and I, I wrote it down. I think it's really important to be committed to the outcome. And, and that doesn't mean that we get what we want all the time. But the outcome that we're aiming for, um, it's really important to stay committed to that. I remember going through a particularly challenging period in my life where the outcome of that situation, that my whole life felt like it depended on it, um, and it wasn't up to me. I wasn't going to get to make the final decision. Think of, think of a job interview that you are going to and you feel like the decision isn't yours, it's somebody else's. Think of a court case. Think of a diagnosis where you feel like the outcome of this is, is, is maybe not even up to me. But you have to focus and be committed to the outcome you want, right? Uh, thinking about what does it look like? Uh, what is it going to feel like? What about it is important to me? What am I committed to? So if you are committed to the outcome more than you are being, uh, commit more than you are about being right about that possible failure, you're going to save yourself a whole lot of energy. Be committed to the outcome. Be committed to what you want. That again is not control freaking. It is not getting what we want. This isn't like wishing for it and, and wishing it into existence. That's not what we're talking about. We're talking about being so committed to what it is that you are envisioning the outcome to be, that you are going to stay the course, that you are going to celebrate each step forward, even if you're feeling like you've had some 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 things push back against you that sometimes you're going to, to you're going to pull back instead of push forward because that is what's required that you're always going to uh, acknowledge where you're at whether whether it's fatigue or frustration uh, disillusionment um, great joy and, and happiness in light of all of this that you're going to be nimble during these times and stay flexible and stay gracious and, and generous to yourself and to those around you because you are committed to the outcome. You are committed to the outcome more than you are being right about that possible failure. It is not hard to think that this is all not gonna work out. That's not challenging. It is much more challenging to stay the course. Hold on to that wheel. Stay true to yourself. Stay, stay true to your values. Stay committed to those that you've been committed to, to your, to your people, to your communities, to, to, your, to your team, to your family. Um, stay, stay true to, to your values and stay true to um, being strategic uh, about the plan and the methods that you are, um, that you're incorporating to, to, to stay the course, to achieve that outcome you desire. I am so grateful for you and I am so um, appreciative that I get to talk to you about this because look, I ultimately, um, if it's true for you, it's true for me, it's true for us, for them, for, for all. Um, and that is what I love about sharing things. And that's what I love about learning from you. So share your thoughts with me. I really appreciate it. Thank you.